like, share, and subscribe. スターダム10周年記念イヤー夢の祭典プロローグ大阪ドリームシンデレラ本日の対戦カード輝く女子プロレス最後までお楽しみください On the 20th December 2020 Stardom held the Osaka Dream Cinderella show pay-per-view So it had a seven match card Uh, let's run down the matches that took place on this event. So, we had the Future of Stardom Triple Threat match. Mika defended her title against Saya Ida, Machu Gorichan, and Saya Kamatani, Zoom Zoom. The second match is Oedo Tai, represented by Konami and Tsuko Tora, taking on Riho and Ruaka. After that, representing Donna Del Mondo was Himapoi, Himaka, and Natsupoi. Taking on Oedo Tai with Bea Priestley and Saki Kashima. After that, the high speed title match as Azumi defended against Mei Hoshizuki. Probably saying that wrong, but oh well. After that is the Artist of Stardom six woman tag elimination match as the Cosmic Angels, Tam Nakano, Unagi Sayaka, and Mina Shirakawa took on stars represented by Mayu Iwatani, Starlight Kid, and Gokugan Death. The semi final was the White Belt and SWA double crown match as Julia took on Suri. And the main event for the Red Belt, the World of Stardom title, as Utami Hayashishita defended against Momo Watanabe. Before we get into the review, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and check out all my other videos and MV. And I'm on Twitter at AlfFisher18. That's A L F F I S H E R 18. So let's kick off the review with the Triple Threat Future of Stardom title match as Mika defended her title against Saya Ida and Saya Kamatani. Strong Girl vs. Matri Gori Chan vs. Zoom Zoom. So Ida was pumped up and is jacked to the nines. Just insane energy she had from her entrance. She did hit the ropes when she got in the ring though, so that was pretty funny as well. Kamatani and Mika were as cool as ice. Loads of really cool entrances on this show. A hot start with both of them attacking Mika, the champ, but Mika did knock them down eventually. Mika and Kamatani for a little bit, and they hit strikes back and forth. Kamatani eventually hits the Io Shirai tribute dropkick, but Saya Ida comes back in with chops to both of them. Gori power! Mika and Saya Ida have a power battle, The Ida Bashi only gets a two count because Kamatani breaks it up with a stomp. A knee and dropkick, but only for a near fall. Kamatani continues to dominate before Mika comes in and hits a superplex. Ida and Mika fight on the top rope, and a nasty sunset bomb from Ida, and Mika's head bounces off the mat, and she gets a legitimate concussion from this. And she was out for the rest of this match. Luckily, she returned for the end of the show,、uh, as you'll see later. Northern Light suplex attempted by Ida, but it's blocked. Kamatani hits a bicycle kick, but Saya eventually does hit the Northern Light suplex, but because of she's hurt, she can't get the pin. Ida spikes Kamatani from the corner with her move from the corner, I don't know what it's called, and it only gets a two count low. But she hits the Brain Buster instead for the victory. A big emotional win for Saya Ida, and there's an emotional post match with Kito and Mayu getting in the ring, and Sa. Sai is crying, and after the match, it is announced that the rules are changing that it will not be two years' experience anymore, it will now be three years' experience allowed for the future of s t a r l a n Belt. Hopefully, a nice long reign for Macho Gori Chan. So, this match had nice, fast pacing to it, and it really showcased Ida, which is a good thing as she has lost a lot recently, so she really did need to shine more. I thoroughly enjoyed this, and it was an excellent way to start the show. And it was only 8 minutes and 19 seconds, and so、uh, this one is a must watch. Excellent stuff. Match 2 was Konami, the submission sniper, teaming up with Natsuko Tora to take on Ryo and Ruaka. Just want to say that Konami is just so cool. And Ryo and Ruaka were a sweet team. Attack from the bell from Oedotai as expected, and they beat up Ruaka in the ring. 
They slowly work over Ruaka, but Ruaka comes back with a crossbody and gets the hot tag to Riho. Drop kick, tilt to Wall and 6-1-9 to Natsuko Tora, and a top rope crossbody only gets a two count. Tora comes back with his shoulder block and sweet Jesus, that cannonball in the corner. Absolutely crushed Riho. Samoan drop for two, and Konami with kicks for a two count as well. Rio with a stomp and then a suplex again for a two, but Ruaka is back in the ring and she hits her tackles. She misses a kick and gets caught in an armbar, but is quick to get to the ropes. Ruaka continues to get beaten up, but her and Rio use teamwork to take back control. Ruaka then hits big boots to Konami and a fisherman suplex, but only a two count. Tora uses a chair and Konami locks in the triangle answer for the submission victory. It was a decent enough match, you know, at 7 minutes and 5 seconds, uh, it, but it was filler. It was just a filler match to get people on the card. I'm still not a fan of most of Tora's matches, to be honest. I just don't find her offense that interesting. It's not really my style, and I was not a fan of the finish at all. I mean, you shouldn't be having to cheat to beat Ruaka, to be honest. And I love Ruaka, but she's a rookie. You're using a chair to beat them. Doesn't really make a way to tie look good, does it? But Ruark and Rio were a decent team. I like the way they worked. But this one is skippable and did not put Oda Tai in the great light. So next up was Himapoi with Himaka and Natsupoi representing Donna Del Mondo taking on Oda Tai's Bea Priestley and Saki Kashima. I absolutely love Himapoi, love their interactions, and Himaka's theme song is an absolute certified banger. On Himika's entrance, uh, she nearly fell on her entrance and she corpsed and was laughing about it and speaking to Poi about it, which was fun to see. Away do tie attack upon the bell as expected and they brawl on the outside of the ring. We will eventually go back in the ring and Himika is worked over for a while. Away do tie with good teamwork and Saki rakes the eyes of Himika and locks in a nice submission. Again, I'm not going to know what these submissions are called, to be honest. But it was like a Black Widow, you know what A.G. Lee used to do. Himika keeps nearly reversing stuff but never is able to. But she eventually hits a tackle on Bia and tags in Poi. And Poi picks up the pace. I mean the pace was already good but she picks up the pace even more. And drop kick into the ropes and a nice cross body but only a two count. A very nice sequence as Poi gets for a cross body but is caught by Bia and Saki. But Himika comes in and hits a tackle on both of them. Bia with a knee and a nice suplex for a two count. Saki is back in, but Poi takes control and tags in Himika. Corner attack, tackle, and crazy face Boston. Uh, Saki gets the ropes though. Knee in the ropes, but only for a near fall. Saki comes back by hitting her Karana and a kick in the ropes as a Wodotai take over. Top rope stomp, but only a two count is registered. Codebreaker and a kick, but Poi breaks up the pin there. Himika with knees and a torch rack slam and is absolutely gobsmacked that it's only a two count. Double torture rack on Bia and Saki, and then they push and then they are pushed to the outside and Poi hits a crossbody dive to them on the outside. Back in the ring, Saki out of nowhere with the revival for a 2.9 as Poi breaks up the pin. Very good false finish there. Himika with a clothesline and a power bomb on Saki for the three count. Well, I didn't expect this one. A really fun, cool sequence is this one. All 11 minutes and five seconds of this match was fun to watch. Very fast paced, all worked hard, and it's really surprised me with its actions. I, I was looking at this match thinking, this will be fine filler, but this really shocked me with how good it was. It was so much fun. To me, Saki Kashima shined in this, but everyone worked hard. This is a must-watch match. Great stuff, and no one's talking about this. This is a sleeper hit. And again, I love Himapoi. Next up, the high-speed title is on the line as Azumi takes on, from Marvelous, Mei Hoshizuki. For some reason, any wrestler called Mei does the exact same pose. And But Mei has a cool attire. And Azumi is very cool here, very badass, and she has new pink, reddish hair. Fast paced start, as you'd expect in a high speed division. Lots of misses and reversals to begin this one, and then a stalemate and stare. Armbar by Azumi, as Mei runs in for a move, 
but May is quick to the ropes to get out of it. Drop kick in the corner by Azumi. Two count, but straight into an arm bar, but again, May gets the ropes. Bit slower this time. Back and forth strikes and more high speed action. Awesome sequence as May takes control with drop kicks. And by drop kicks, I mean many, 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 many drop kicks by May. Back and forth strikes again. Azumi wins with a forearm shot. She's pushed as she goes for the springboard in the corner. But May misses a drop kick on the outside and Azumi gets on the apron and hits a running kick. She takes a swig of water and admires her work. As May's getting back in the ring, Azumi lines her up and hits a spike rana right on her head and then a suplex, but only a near fall, surprisingly. She goes to the top rope, but the stomp misses. A roll up by May, but only for a two count. One of many roll ups in this match. A kick as May runs in, takes May down. Two count, back into the armbar low. The reversal fails and back into the crossface armbar. Azumi changes submission, but May still gets to the ropes. Azumi eventually hits the top rope stomp and it looks nasty, but it does not get the three count. Azumi with her tilt well armbar, but she tries to change the submission and nearly pays for it. Roll up city, and Azumi hits the Azumi sushi, but does not get a three count here either. A lot more pins are exchanged for a long while. I mean, the ref must be getting tired, but eventually Azumi wins with a roll up. They hug afterwards, and apparently they might be forming a tag team at some point in the future. An extremely fast match. I don't think this was as good as people were saying it was, but it was still a phenomenal match. And if you hate this match, I can understand that. It's not everyone's style, this high speed stuff. And it's not really my style, but for what it was, it was executed perfectly. And a triple threat with Kito and May and Azumi would be insane. For me, this is a must watch match. Next up, the Artist of Stardom titles on the line as Cosmic Angels take on Stars. Just want to say that Cosmic Angels are just so fun. So we kick off with Mayu and Tam staring each other down. These two are, well, Mayu's not happy with Tam as Tam's basically stabbed her in the back and broken off and broken Stars in half. So Mayu says, just bring it to Tam. So Mayu and Tam start and have a nice back and forth. RKO by Tam and that cartwheel knee thing that I don't know what it's called. Kito holds Tam on the apron and Stars beat up Tam. Mayu and Kito are vicious in this match. And Kito's been very vicious recently. It's a new side of her. Tam eventually comes back with a double DDT. And then with the help of Mina and Unagi, she takes flight on the outside. Mina's in now. Chansu on Kito, but Gokugan breaks it up. Mina continues to take charge, but Kito gets a springboard arm drag and a very fast and painful looking drop kick in the ropes for a two count. Unagi and Death in now, and Gokugan Death with her usual boring offense. Suplex by Unagi, and then her pitch perfect leg drop, best leg drop in the business, but only a two count. Nice splash by Unagi, but the pin is broken up. Gory special, but Gokugan flips out and rolls Unagi up for a three. Unagi is out. It's three on two now. Tam and Kito in. Double 619 with Mayu. And a standing moonsault by Kito, but only a two count. They all go to the top rope, do stars. And a top rope sent in by Gokugan on Tam. And Kito gets on Mayu's shoulders with a diving crossbody. Very high. Mina breaks up the pin, though. Tam with a back suplex. And a super kick back fist combo with Mina. Destiny Hammer, but the pin is broken by Gokugan. German suplex is attempted, but Kito lands on her feet. Mayu with a super kick into a tiger suplex by Kito for a free count. Whoa, Kito pinned Tam Nakano to leave it three on one. So Mina is all on a lonesome. Double suplex by MK Sisters and they go back to the top rope, but this proves to be costly. Mina gets up and knocks Mayu off onto the apron and drop kicks her out. It's now two on one. Kito with a crossbody from the top rope, but only a two count. 
Mina hits an implant DDT, but only for a near fall. Kitto looking strong in this one. Kitto misses a corner attack, however, and gets thrown over the top rope. She just tries to hang on like Shawn Michaels and Dolph Ziggler, and she does for a while, but eventually Mina hits a running dropkick and eliminates Kitto. So now it's one-on-one, -on -one, Mina versus Gokugan. Why Gokugan was left for last, no idea, but okay. Mina with a Russian leg sweep and a dropkick, only for a two-count. Luthez, but into a roll-up from death, only a two-count there. Spinning back fist and a top rope press. Again, not Bree. And then Mina with a sort of back face buster sort of thing. Back suplex face buster. Not sure what you call it. But it wins the match anyway. So Mina was 3-1 on one down and won the match. Post-match, Tam announces officially that Cosmic Angels are now their own faction. And my you is very, very angry at this. She says, Tam Nakano and you other two. She refuses to even mention their names. Jeez. Mayu is not satisfied with losing via over the top rope and nor is Kitto. She says she's going to crush Tam and Tam is now her enemy. Kitto is not happy either and they will team with Ida to face Cosmic Angels eventually because it's been delayed due to Mina's injury with her nose. Unagi speaks up and wants to shut up stars once and for all. Tam accepts the challenge, and then they go into their delicious speech. Really great match here, a lot of fun, although still not a huge fan of Gokun. I say not a huge fan, I really do not like the Gokun character at all. It just annoys me to no end. But I'm loving this story of Team Tam and Mayu, and when we do get that six-woman tag, it's going to be amazing. And when we get Mayu versus Tam, hopefully we get multiple matches out of this, and maybe like, this is going to be a war, and it's going to be fun. Mina got a really good showcase and Kitto also was made to look strong. So that was really good to see and I highly recommend checking this one out. The semi-final was for the double crown, the white belt, the Wonder of Stardom title and the SWA, and the SWA title as Julia took on Suri. Both ice cold and cool as all hell. Absolutely love their two entrances. Brilliant, brilliant stuff even from the entrances. So we kick off with really good mat wrestling to begin. Neither can really gain control, but Siri hits a tackle and some leg kicks to eventually do so. But Julia comes back with an arm drag and a kick. Big boot in the rope sends Siri all the way over to the outside. Julia grabs a chair and puts Siri in it and hits runs all the way from the other side of the apron. I guess she's not on the apron, but on the floor, on the other side of the floor, and hits a big boot. She then tells Siri to do the same to her, and Siri does it. That was a mistake from Julia there. Um, Siri with a running boot and a knee, and then plants her into the announce table. Running knee from the apron fry Siri, and Siri is now in control with her offense of lethal kicks and strikes. Single leg Boston, but Julia gets the ropes. Julia back with strikes of her own, but Siri just takes it in her stride. DDT by Julia, however, takes her down. Kick and big boot battle. A very nice slugfest. Julia wins by hitting a neck breaker and then another one in the corner. Missile drop kick for a two. And she locks in the STF, but Siri gets the ropes. Backstabber and kick by Siri for a two count. But Julia hits a Michinoku driver as Siri comes running in, but only gets a two count. They trade German suplexes and then a running knee by Siri and... Due to the German suplexes, Shuri is also down as well as Julia. Slugfest as they're both getting back up from their knees. Julia laughs at Shuri, but she is not laughing anymore as Shuri hits a lethal kick when Julia gets too cocky and starts playing around with Shuri, you know, doing that whole thing, trash talking, kicking her, slapping her. Comes to pay for it. Kick fest by Suri and Julia is down, but Suri also gets too cocky and does not go for a pin. So she picks up Julia for more kicks. Suri picks up Julia again, but gets caught in the octopus or octopus like maneuver. Again, like a Black Widow sort of thing. I don't know what it's called. But Suri hits a drop for a two count. On the ramp now, and Julia blocks a German suplex and hits a glorious driver. But again, due to the damage she's taken, she can't take full advantage and run back in the ring with Suri. 
both are down on the outside and both need to get back in before the 20 count. Julia barely gets in at 16 and Shuri just makes it at 19. Back in, Julia hits a top rope glorious best. Back in, Julia hits a top rope glorious buster, but does not get the three count, but is very close. Nasty armbar, but Shuri eventually gets to the ropes. The running kick misses, and a sleeper by Shuri. But Julia hits a back suplex to get out of it. They slowly get back up, and a package pile driver on Shuri's neck for a 2.9. Shuri reverses a glorious driver into a sharpshooter, but Julia gets the ropes. Both are tired at this point. Shuri now with knees in the corner and an STO for a two count, and a German suplex for a two. Julia comes back with a big boot eventually, and a backdrop and a running kick by Julia, but again does not finish the job. Glorious driver, but Julia cannot pin straight away due to her injuries. Selling. You love to see it. Eventually she does manage to get a pin, but it only gets a two count again. High kick by Shuri, and another, and Julia is completely out of it. She goes for the pin, and Julia can't even kick out, but she just managed to use her ring awareness to get the ropes. Awesome stuff. Headbutt by Julia, but a spinning back fist by Shuri, and both are down, and that ends the match at 30 minute mark. I'm not sure if it was a draw from the 30 minutes. Or a draw from a double down, but at the end of the day, it's still a draw. After match, they are both on their back and hit. They fist bump, are crying and hugging, and give a thumbs up. What a match! I really needed to write about this to appreciate its greatness. What a phenomenal match! Both worked their asses off and told a great story. I loved how they both got too cocky at points and it cost them the match. There was a time when Shuri could have won the match, but she got too greedy, kept picking Julia up and did not capitalise. Julia was in domination, but again got too cocky and it cost her control of the match. Very good storytelling there. They sold the injuries as the match progressed. You know, they slowed down near the end. Very good stuff. And a draw was the needed thing, as neither could really lose here. Definitely watch this one. If you have to watch only one match, definitely choose this one. Main event time, as the Wonder of Stardom title is on the line, as Utami Hai Shishida takes on Momo Watanabe. Mayu Watani is on commentary for this one. And Utami has a new red championship attire. Uh, they trade holds to begin with, so a nice start. And they lead to a stalemate. Okay, good stuff. Utami begins to work over Momo's leg for a good five minutes, you know, locking those submissions, kicking it, drop kicking it. Momo comes back with a tornado DDT and a running apron kick as Momo's leg is magically healed. This will not be brought up, by the way, for the rest of the match. So that entire first five minutes was completely pointless because Momo does not sell the leg for the rest of the match and Utami does not work over the leg ever again. Other than what one kick maybe, so I, and that's annoying because that could have been a five star story. I thought what they were going with it was, Otami was going to work over Momo's leg, so Momo's kicks would be less lethal later in the match, and that would explain why Otami kept kicking out of the kicks, and eventually wins the match. But they did not go down that route. B driver on the outside already, bit too quick for that, but okay. Missile drop kick and three drop kicks in the corner. Camera clutch locked in on Utami, but no tap out. And Momo slows the pace considerably down by methodically working over Utami. Utami back with a tackle and a drop kick and a missile drop kick for a two. And then hits a clothesline. And then hits a back Samoan drop type maneuver, but does not go for the pin. To the top rope now, and Momo hits a top rope rock bottom. She misses a kick and gets caught in the ankle lock and it's changed to a sleeper hold and then a face hold? I'm not sure what you call that. Uh, choke, face choke hold. A front face choke hold or something like that. But that is really nice, very nice sequence there. Momo eventually gets the ropes. B driver but she can't get the pin. They trade suplexes. Didn't really like this part where they traded suplexes. They no sold them completely. And then started trading strikes. 
Should have probably done the trading strikes and then the suplexes and do a double down after that. That would have made more sense, but just trading the suplexes really kind of was meaningless. Meteora by Momo for two. Sleeper hold, but Tommy gets the ropes. Top rope Meteora by t for but top rope Meteora by Momo for a two count again. Air raid siren from Utami from the top rope, but only for a near fall. Torture rack bomb for a 2.9, but after Moe kicks out, she locks in a rev triangle lock. Really cool, and Utami uses her power to power bomb out. Okay, so there is some good stuff in this match. That was very good. A weird move then happens as Utami goes for a hangman, but Moe is meant to reverse it by... I'm assuming going for a Meteora in midair, but it doesn't really go to plan. Momo apparently got the better of it and locks in a sleeper hold. Suplex and a Tiger Suplex for a 2. Peach Sunrise for a 2. Boots and kicks by Momo, but Utami hits a back suplex. And 3 deadlift Germans for a 2.9. And then the Hangman drop for a 3 count. Post match, we set up Utami versus Mika for the next challenge in January. Which makes sense because they've won, Utami won one, they've drawn one, and Mike has won one, so this will be the final battle. Or final battle for now. So the first ten minutes of this match I did not really enjoy. As I said earlier, the first five minutes we were looking over the leg was kind of pointless. I wasn't a fan of the B driver on the apron so on not on the apron, B driver on the outside so quickly. Um, so the first 10 minutes I didn't enjoy, but it did pick up um, in the second half of the match, however. And there was some really nice stuff, especially with the transitions and the submission transitions. So there was really good stuff in there. But for me, there was too many fundal errors, fundamental errors with the story and to be anything great. And for me, it did not have a big match feel for me. That's just my opinion. If you enjoyed the match, that's good, but this was definitely not for me, and I really didn't have fun watching this one. And on repeat viewings, it's gotten less and less enjoyable, while as other matches have gotten more enjoyable. It's not a match I'm going to look on back on anytime soon, and I would only recommend this match is if you love Utami or you love Momo. But, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Momo, but I like Utami. I really do like Utami. She's very good. But yeah, this is, this is one that I'm not huge fan of sorry overall though uh, Osaka Dream Cinderella was a very good show maybe I'd even say great most of the matches delivered the only matches I wasn't huge fans of was the main event and the second match the tag match but the rest of the show was amazing and I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10 uh, really good stuff for me match of the night was Julia versus Shuri um, originally I gave it to May versus Azumi but after on repeat viewings, I'm going to give it to Julia versus Shuri. But an honourable mention to Mei and Azumi. For me, MVP, I can't choose Julia and I can't choose Shuri on their own. So I'm going to have to choose them both. Julia and Shuri win my MVP of this night. But honourable mentions to Sai Ida, Mina Shirakawa and Azumi. Thank you for listening to my review of Osaka Dream Cinderella. Make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. Arrivederci.